Good morning, my listeners. This is another episode of Good Morning BSS World. And this time we are building bridge between Europe and United States. And we go to San Diego, California, where is my special guest, Jason Heil from Redial BPO, the president of this company. How, Jason? Hey, how are you doing? Very well, very well. What's the weather in California? Today, it's actually a little bit gloomy. Uh, I'm closer to the beach, so we always have a marine layer waiting for it to burn off still early it usually burns off by noon living next to the beach this is a and perfect way to to spend the life i am living in the middle of poland so no mountains no rivers oh actually we have one river we but i'm not really close to it yeah, yeah. Okay, Jason, uh, this is a podcast where we are getting familiar with the BPO businesses from all around the world. And this time it is the time for you. So we move to sunny California, but basically you, your business is not in U.S. California. This is in Tijuana. Our, our operations are in Tijuana, correct. Our, our corporate office is in uh, California. It's in San Diego, uh la jolla so that's usually where we have our corporate office but all of our operations are across the border in mexico so how did it happen how how it started when the redial bpo answered the first call um it's very interesting actually how we started we started off basically uh my partner is my brother and we're twins actually so uh, we started off in San Diego having a 20-person call center uh, doing merchant services. Um, so we ended up calling business to business and um, hiring people all across San Diego to make phone calls. And what ended up happening is San Diego raised their minimum wage and we either had to shut down our doors or be dynamic. So. With that being said, um, my son had a friend whose uh, his dad was a businessman in Mexico. And I started talking to him and asking him, how do we open up a business in Mexico? And uh, fast forward five years later, we have a business in Mexico. It's thriving. We're doing well. And uh, yeah, that's how we ended up in Mexico. Primarily got priced out and it was more affordable. And we had a lot of deportees and talented people in Tijuana that spoke accent neutral English and Spanish. And we were able to hire them for a more affordable price than what we would have paid if we were in San Diego. So, and what was the year? Uh, 2018, 2017, okay. around that time. So like four years ago. So uh, this was the beginning and how big are you now? What's the size of a center? Uh, right now we have 300 seats and we are opening up another 200 to 250 seats in Mexicali. We have two locations in Tijuana, one in Sonorio and another one in Centro, Fourth and Revolution. It's in a, a beautiful historic building in downtown center. And uh, yeah, and we're looking at another one which is ironically uh, also a historic center in Mexicali. So that'll be our third delivery point. So deciding of running business uh, on, in Mexico, actually in Mexico, however we, uh, we, we call it, it means that you have the so, uh, talent pool, which is able to support uh, your clients in English and in Spanish at least. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. English and Spanish and we do come across very few people that speak French and Portuguese. Okay. So let's take a closer look um, on an American client. Okay. So who mm -hmm. is using the call contact center services? Because uh, uh, I am now based in Europe and we do also have a lot of clients from uh, US. So, so the call contact centers who are based in Poland, in Czechia, in Romania or Bulgaria, they are also providing a number of services to the US based clients. The same is happening in the uh, Philippines or, or in India when it comes to the Asia based call contact centers. But I would like to touch a little bit the preferences of American clients. Do they rather look for the local partners, near shoring partners, offshoring partners? Can we touch a little bit that? Yeah, of course. And it, 
and it all depends on the client and the client's needs. A lot of the clients that we work with, the reason why they want to work with us is just because of the close proximity to the U.S. Uh, obviously, flying to Europe can be, you know, 10 to 12 hours, depending where you're going to Europe, even longer. And flying to the Philippines can sometimes take up to a day, right? So a lot of the times, uh, if you're coming from New York, you're leaving New York and you're at our office within seven to eight hours. And that's, you know, going through the airport, picking up a coffee and driving straight to uh, our facility. We're about 20 minutes from uh, the San Diego International Airport from our city center location, which is in Central. But uh, the clients we work with also have a huge Spanish need. A lot of their clients are uh, bilingual speakers. So we support the English and Spanish portion of their business. Okay, so I can imagine that those Spanish destinations are also quite popular within the American clients, like going to Guatemala, for example, or the region, yeah? Yeah, right, right. And, you know, we develop relationships with other BPO centers in the U.S. that also want to be able to um, outsource their Spanish or will take the overflow of their Spanish. Okay, so let's now touch the type of services which are on the radar, yeah? Because I can imagine that within even the call contact center uh, world, there are different types of the services. Which are which ones are the most popular at the moment, if you will analyze it from your experience? What kind of services do your clients actually need now? Um, it's more, I think, it's based off niche. Our niche industries that we work in is loan servicing, uh, also retail, customer support, and debt collections. Uh, we do have a large client that we service all three sides of their business, whether it's uh, servicing of the loan, handling the customer service, and doing the collection side. So it's full circle of the entire business. So, so between... So it means those are both incoming and outgoing calls, yeah? Uh, yeah, 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 it is. Depending which which uh, area of the business that they would be working in, but correct. But we do handle inbound and outbound or okay. even blended campaigns. I am not very much familiar with some regulations, actually, which do the American-based or, or the Mexico-based companies need to follow to be able to provide the call contact center services to the um, uh, clients. Do you need to be in line with some kind of an um, quality um, um, regulations or something like that? For QA side or just for the call center act? For the call center act. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's stuff that we have to follow as far as not, as far as not using robo dialers or um, you know, we have to click to dial or dial each number individually, but we use our client systems and their, their systems are, uh, following the SEC rules and the calls, uh, call center act. And we use their systems and we just provide the personnel. Okay. So, uh, let's come back to, to the, uh, let's say element of the growth of the of your business we have discussed already the past four years which as mm -hmm. you mentioned the, this is quite significant growth so far so what are yeah. the plans what are the plans now for the next year or the next four years so if, if we talked about the past four years so what are the next four years for redire bpo so then we can start with short-term growth short-term growth right now or a short term short-term goal is to get mexicali up and running uh, we're looking to have Mexicali up and running by July. Um, we have some clients that are coming on board and some existing clients that are scaling. So we want to be able to fulfill their needs first. Uh, we're looking at Mexicali and then we have a few other delivery points in Mexico that we're also looking at. Now, within the next two years, we plan to also hop onto another continent and start building out a call center over there as well. But we're still we're still in uh, discussions with uh, a few uh, locations, and uh, just seeing what would be the best fit for a partnership wise, or even so which, an acquisition. So which ones are on the short list? The short list right now we are looking. Um, Mexicali obviously is one. Yeah. We also have Puebla, uh, Monterrey, and Guadalajara. 
Guadalajara. Okay, but um, okay, this is all quite close to um, to US. Uh, any plans for the uh, expansions to, as you mentioned, to the other continents? Yes, yeah, yeah. There's some there's some plans, obviously. We, so we want to be able. We want to be able. Well, we're looking at South Africa. We want to be able to provide um, follow the sun campaigns around the clock doing 24-7 customer uh, service. Now, we're able to do that in Mexico right now. It just makes more sense if we were to able to follow the sun. Yeah, sure. South Africa, th this is a destination which is mm, this year actually becoming very, very popular. You're already another person who is mentioning this destination. It sounds like um, th they are um, building their trust very much when it comes to the American investors. Yeah, they have a, they have a really uh, nice operations. I was over there uh, two years ago, pre-COVID, at the the PESA when they were inviting a bunch of people to look over their entire infrastructure and what South Africa had to provide. And I was very impressed with what they had. So we're looking, uh, we are talking to a few centers out there, and we're looking to hopefully uh, make some sort of JV deal or even go out there and set up our own operation. Whoa, uh, uh, okay, okay. The, 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 I heard a, a lot of good things about the South African destination because of the type of uh, the quality of work. Also, they mm -hmm. have a very good advertising campaigns recently showing mm -hmm. that this is a trustful destination. Uh, and how about Asia? What are your, your opinions about the Asian destinations? Any plans for that? Uh, you know, that's something that we haven't looked at. I do have some friends uh, in the industry that have their own BPO companies, fairly large, and they're all over Asia as well. And they, I've heard a lot of great things, but that's just something that we haven't been focused on. We know it's very popular uh, for people to outsource to the Philippines or, you know, even India, for example, but it's just, it's something that we haven't really looked into. We're more so focusing on what we can do and what we can provide and our roadmap. And right now our roadmap is to steer, stay in the near shore Americas and also venture off into uh, South Africa. Okay, I need to ask you this one question. You know that uh, South Africa is the same time zone as Poland is? Yeah, I do, I do. I have family in Poland, so. <laughs> really? Yes. Where, so, in which city? Uh, Wuj. It would. Okay. Yeah, and I have some cousins in Warsaw, Warsaw as well. It's the same city that you're in. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Which actually is considered to be a very good location for the BPO investors. There are um, a lot of big brands who already have set up their operation centers and are providing the BPO, multilingual BPO um, services. I can tell you that I was running a business in Wuch a few years ago. And oh, really? it and yeah, absolutely. It was for one of the uh, Irish uh, BPO companies. And mm -hmm. we had a team of... Uh, about 120 people at that time speaking 14 foreign languages oh very nice very nice it's very cool yeah no i haven't been there since covid so i'm looking forward to going back i actually have a wedding uh in the fall so hopefully we'll be able to make it back there now if you will be considering to go to which i can arrange you some visits to the uh, with the representatives of the city hall and they can share with you some business opportunities of of creating a multilingual call contact center in that city oh yeah that'd be awesome i'd love to look at that okay uh jason let's touch some um, maybe non-obvious things are there such things which uh, uh, you run as your business which you do not present on your web pages or on your films which i actually have seen prior to our meeting on on youtube mm -hmm. uh such as things that i, d I d necessarily don't talk about I'm yeah. actually pretty, I'm very transparent. Uh, I'm very transparent. So when we talk to the client and they do their due diligence, I always explain to them uh, the culture and the workforce in Mexico. I also explain to them attrition. I explain to them a lot of the agents are also commission based. So we provide even commissions for customer service campaigns. So uh, I, we also have a very low attrition uh, with agents coming onto our campaign, but we have a very rigorous filtration process making sure we i think we're like one of the only call centers that actually do background checks in uh tijuana and check previous work history there's a huge demand for uh employees or work agents but 
we are one of the few that actually do work history and look for stable employees. So, uh, and I explain that to a client when they're onboarding that, it, you know, building up and ramping up a solid team can take some time. But once we have that solid team up and running, it's definitely, you know, shooting to the moon. So. I'd like to come back to American clients and their need for the BPO services. Do you think that uh, we are now in such times that American businesses are looking more for outsourcing or this is rather a stable situation when it comes to the last one you know, two years? It, it's hard to say. We've had a lot of inquiries regarding outsourcing. So it seems that a lot of people do want to cut costs and focus more on the operational side of their business and uh, day to day operations as far as managing a call center can be sometimes intensive and, you know, dealing with people and the turnover, it's sometimes easier to outsource it so they can focus on the growth of their business. So we have our relationships and our partners that we work with, we handle that stress for them. So um, for the most part, yeah, I still think it's it's something that is growing and people are interesting, especially after they get to a certain point of their business. It just makes more sense to outsource it than maintain it internally. But every business is different. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I am asking because we are also uh, from Europe are analyzing what are the needs uh, of the growth of outsourcing behaviors from different uh, areas of the world. And uh, just recently in the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, we have seen that there is some kind of an increase of questions asked from either US, UK or Scandinavia. Those are the, the three destinations which are becoming, like, let's say, more active when considering looking for some either near or offshoring destinations to set up their own businesses or to look for the outsourcing partners mm -hmm. so perhaps that that looks like that okay uh jason um a question how to find uh, Redial bpo in uh, internet so if somebody would like to contact you how to do that in the fastest way uh, redialbpo.com obviously will direct you to our website. Also, um, just searching basically for a near shore call center. I, I'm pretty sure we pop up to like one of the top three uh, websites. So, uh, yeah, finding us online is real easy. You can either directly go to our website or just look for a Mexico call center and we'll show up. This always sounds to me quite um, uh, tricky because you are saying uh, to look f uh, for the near shoring destination. For me, Tijuana yeah, is competitors. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, for me, Tijuana is offshoring when it comes yeah. from Poland. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. Yeah, but for us being close to America, a lot of our clients, like I said, our clients, we have one client from the UK, uh, but for the most part, we service US based companies. So. No, sure. Uh, I'm laughing, of, of course, because this is absolutely rather not popular to uh, outsource uh, services from Europe to US or, or to Mexico, mm -hmm. which rather goes the other direction. But anyway, this is this uh, a fi a funny, funny combination of words when you talk to people from all around the world, how yeah. near shoring or offshoring is being considered. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It all depends on your location, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. Okay, so uh, the last but not least uh, question. Uh, we were talking about your plans for the growth uh, and other sites on the uh, Mexico sites, perhaps the, the South Africa in some kind of a uh, connection to, with your partners. But when it comes to the number of people who work for um, Redial BPO, you are now having how many people? uh including our admin staff we yeah everything are, just the, the whole size around 250 and growing we have a new campaign actually starting on the 24th or 25th because we have yeah 24th we have a new campaign starting so our numbers are constantly growing and um yeah we're at a 250 headcount right now okay so we've got uh, a quarter of a thousand already on board mm -hmm. Yeah. And and with this expansion, doubling, uh, doubling our size. Yeah, doubling our size. Yeah, okay. Or at least having the opportunity to double our size. 
Okay, Jason, it was a, a great chat, I must say. Uh, it is so nice to talk to people from all around the world who are working in the same industry and to yeah. find some interesting uh, topics from the history of the uh, of the business. Because, uh, you know, just, just one final comment from my side. The call contact center business is to be honest, quite old already. Yeah? We, we yeah. are familiar with the call contact center services for few decades already, uh, mm -hmm. or, or perhaps even more than that. And you are an example of a business who just started four years ago and is rapidly growing. So it means there is a still space in this world for this type of businesses to grow. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's still a demand and we're here to service it. So. Jason, it was great to talk to you. Best regards from Poland. And I hope to see you here when you will come to this uh, autumn wedding party. Yeah, absolutely, Victor. We've Jim got Quinn. great parties here. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. All right, have a great day.